faith, hope, and love. Greatest of these is love. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Hello, this is Mark Irvin bringing you a message of faith, hope, and love each Monday through Friday through this internet broadcast. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Hope is the anchor of your soul. And here is the greatest one of the three. You have a Father God who really loves you and cares for you. Yes, that's right. You were created to be loved by God. So listen each Monday through Friday. Tell your friends. Get your Bible. Relax and enjoy the broadcast. This is Mark Irvin. Well, praise God. This is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad to be with you again to bring you another message of faith, hope, and love. And today we are continuing on with our series, The Faith Life. Father, I just pray in Jesus' name that you would bring forth this message in a way that each and every person could understand. I pray that you would give us revelation, Lord. I thank you for a brand new day, a brand new week, Father. A brand new week, Father, to go forward with the plan and the purpose that you have for our lives. In Jesus' name, you working through us. You doing, Father, what you want to do through us in this day, this week. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You can open your Bible to Mark, the 11th chapter. We're teaching on the faith life. The faith life. And here we have... One of those foundational teachings of Jesus for God's faith being in us. And an example of God's faith in us working. Jesus said that the works that I do shall you do also and greater works than these shall you do because I go to the Father. Well, Jesus is our perfect example. He is the perfect example of the faith of God on the inside of a man in the earth, bringing forth God's will in this earth. He walked by faith. He talked by faith. Everything that came out of him was an action of faith. Jesus cursed a tree, and this tree, fig tree, died from the roots. One day he was hungry. He saw a tree in a distance. He went to that tree. It was supposed to be producing fruit at that time. It did not have anything on the tree for him to eat. The Bible says that Jesus answered the tree. And he spoke to this tree and he said, No man eats fruit from you from this day forward. He spoke to that tree. They didn't. He didn't have immediate results in a way that he could see it or other people could see it at the time that he spoke it. It wasn't until the next day. And when Jesus came by the next day, Peter noticed the tree. And it says that he, he remembered and he re- reminded them of what had happened the day before when Jesus spoke to that tree. And it said that that tree was dried up from the roots. It was dead from the roots. It was withered away. It was completely dry. It was completely dead. Jesus spoke. He cursed. And the tree died. Well, that's a good example for you and I. We can not only bless with our tongue, but there are also times that we need to use our tongue to curse and bring death to things that are not of God. And the Bible says that Jesus answered the tree. Apparently this tree was uh, providing some type of negative thought. You know, the, the trees don't speak, but the devil, he uses the negative things of this world to speak negative thoughts. And it's his desire that through these negative thoughts that, that he brings into our soul as a result of negative, negative situations in our life that we speak those thoughts forth. And when we speak those thoughts forth, Jesus said that we take the thoughts when we say it. We literally can bring those things into manifestation in our life. And that's not what we want to happen. We want to speak God's word. We want to speak God's thoughts. God's word and his thoughts are the same thing. And when we do that, we can bring forth God's plan, God's purpose, God's will in our life. So we bless with our tongue. We can also curse. And when we speak against 
just like Jesus. He spoke to that tree and he said, no man eats on this tree from this day forward. And we can do the same thing. We can speak that those those things that are coming into our life to steal from us, those things that are coming into our life that are negative, that are that are not the will of God. No, you don't. You cannot do that in our life. Uh, if there's a sickness in in that wants to manifest itself in your body, you can speak against those things. You know, I've had those times where symptoms want to come up and you can you can feel that symptom in your body. And I simply say, no, I refuse. I refuse to allow that symptom to dwell in my body. Just a few days ago, you know, there were some things that were going around here and in Nuremberg and people getting sick. And, and you know, you're around these people. People, you're around people all the time, that in out in in the world, and and you hear about it. I, my son just got home from a ski trip, and half the class was sick, and all this information was coming, and and so you hear that kind of stuff, and then the devil says, "Oh, you know, that's going to get you. you you're, I'm going to bring that on you." And instantly, when that thought came, "No, you don't. You will not bear that." fruit in my body i resist you i go against you and thank god it's good to walk in divine health and that's the way it works you curse these things you go against those things that are contrary to the will of god in mark the 11th chapter notice in verse 20 it says and in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots and Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Now remember this verse. It says, Have faith in God. That's what the King James says, but actually the Greek says it this way. Have the God kind of faith. I don't know why they didn't translate that properly. I guess that uh, they, you know, they didn't have the the revelation of of the fact that God's faith can really be on the inside of man, and that's exactly what this verse is saying. This verse is saying, and and in the footnotes of many Bibles, it even says that 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 this should have been translated: "Have the God kind of faith." Have the God kind of faith. Well, Paul referred to that in Galatians 2 and verse 20, where he said, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I live, I live by, it says, the faith of the Son of God. Well, Paul lived by the faith of the Son of God. He lived by the same faith that was on the inside of Jesus. And Jesus had God's faith in him. And uh, remember, we read in Second Peter 1 and, and verse 1, it says that we have obtained like precious faith. We have God's faith. This is a part of our new creation. This is a part of who we have become in Christ. When you were born again, God put his faith in you. And so Jesus cursed this fig tree be th through this faith of God that was on the inside of him, the, the curse was released and it caused that fig tree to die. This faith is on the inside of you. God's faith is there. When God says no, no is no. When God says yes, yes is yes. And, and if God says no and you speak out a no, then it's going to stop. If God says yes and you speak out a yes, it's going to come to pass. Praise God. That's what Jesus is going to teach us here in verse 22. In verse 22 through 25. It says, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. Wow. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever... Now notice, it doesn't say whosoever apostle, whosoever prophet, whosoever pastor, <laughs> or, you know, a great uh, man of God that you know that, that uh, you say, wow, that person has done great, great things. I'm going to tell you something. That person that has done great, great things started small. Nobody gets there overnight. And, and that's the way God works. God says, as we're faithful over little, he makes us great over much. I mean, think about what God did even through his son, Jesus. 
he birthed Jesus into a small town, a little town called Bethlehem, a, a place that you wouldn't think that a king would be born. Yet that's what God does. He starts big things in small places. And, and he put his faith in you to do big things f- through you. Hallelujah. All of us, each one of us have God's faith in us. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Now remember, Jesus has just cursed a tree and it dies. And now Jesus is standing at the Mount of Olives. And when Jesus stands at the Mount of Olives, and and he can literally see this on the inside, because you see, he's not only teaching them about faith, but Jesus is also releasing some prophetic words. Jesus knows the Old Testament, and he knows that there's going to be a day that he's going to come back to the earth as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And the Bible says that when he comes, and this is found in Zechariah, the 14th chapter, he's going to come and the Mount of Olives is going to split. This is probably the same mountain that Jesus was at when he was transfigured. The Bible doesn't say that, but I believe that's the way it is according to the evidence of the prophetic word about when Jesus Christ returns. He's going to return. And and uh, at his second coming, as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, when he brings his kingdom to the earth, I'm not talking about the time when we leave in the rapture. I'm talking about the end of the tribulation when Jesus Christ comes back as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The Bible says that he's going to speak to this mountain, and this mountain is going to split. It's going to be removed. And that's what Jesus can see here. He's, he's given out a prophetic word, but at the same time, he's teaching them how it's going to happen, how it's going to come to pass. And then he's not just speaking about a mountain. He's speaking about things. And so we could uh, bring this into our own lives in reference to big things that are in front of us that need to move. Maybe you have something big in your life. Maybe you have something impossible in your life. Maybe uh, the doctor has told you there's no chance for you. Maybe you have a financial situation. I just had a testimony recently of of some of our partners, and, and these our partners were very deep, deep, deep in debt. I mean, it was a large amount of money, and praise God, they have been sowing, and they've been sowing, and they've been believing God with the seed that they have sown, and God has supernaturally worked in their life, and the debt is almost completely paid and supernaturally. <laughs> That's God, supernaturally. And you know what? Praise God, not only has God taken them forward to where all of that's been, has is taken care of but a god also take them forward to where they will prosper 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 hallelujah that's a wonderful wonderful praise report but for them that it was a humongous mountain it was a big big mountain but they sowed in faith they believed god in faith they spoke the word of god in faith and and that mountain has been removed wow isn't that great for verily i say unto you now look at this that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any that your Father, which also is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Well, Jesus is talking here about the heart. And the heart here in this verse is a reference to your soul. How do you know that? Because when you were born again, you became a complete brand new creation in your spirit you're lacking nothing this is exactly what the bible says the bible teaches us that we are complete in christ we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places that's ephesians 1 and verse 3 
And then uh, Peter writes that we've been given all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And, and what we've been given that pertains to life and godliness is in the divine nature. Peter writes about this in his own book. We have God's life, his Zoe life in us, his nature in us. Well, part of his nature is his own faith. Romans 12, 4 is another verse that says that we have all been given the measure of faith. We have God's faith in us. That's a part of our spirit. It's one of the fruits of the spirit that the Bible mentions. And so this faith is in us. It's in our spirit. You never have a faith problem in your spirit. God never has a problem believing his own word. <laughs> and that ability is there. It's in you to believe the word. And so what does it say? It says here in verse 23. Now remember, Jesus is saying, have the God kind of faith. So he is preparing them at that time for the change that will come into them in the new creation, in the time that they step out of the Old Testament way of living and into the New Testament way of living. How does that happen? It happens by being born again. If you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, God has come to live on the inside of you. Now look at this. So it says, for verily or truly I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, unto you what? Unto you that has the faith of God in them. Unto you, I say unto you. It's, that's, that's the whosoever there. You've got to be born again. You've got to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. And when that happens, God comes to live in you. If you've not received Jesus, you, um, all you have to do is pray and say, Jesus, I believe in you as my Savior. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe that you became sin with my sin. I believe you went to hell and paid the price for my sin. I believe that you resurrected from hell. And I believe in you as my Lord and my Savior. And if you do that, right there, that's simple. God comes to live in you, and you become a brand new person, and then God's faith is there to where you can operate the same way that he operates. Man was created in God's likeness and God's image to do it the same way that he does it, and he puts his faith in us to do it. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, Unto this mountain. So there's no excuse. You fit in that category right now if you're unsaved. Praise God. If you were unsaved, now you're saved. Thank you, Jesus. That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, but notice, and shall not doubt in his heart. Well, if you're a new creation in Christ, a brand new person, and God has come to live on the inside of you, you don't have any doubt there in your spirit. This word heart has to do with your soul. And that's why the Bible teaches us that we need to get our souls renewed with the word. Well, I see that that's all the time we have for this message today. Listen again tomorrow as we continue on with this series, The Faith Life. This is Mark Irvin. Faith, hope, and love. Greatest of these is love. Faith, hope, and love. Well, this is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad you got to be with us today. If you've never prayed and received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to give you an opportunity. It's the most important thing you'll do in your life. This is the way that you can go to heaven. This is the way God becomes your Father. So just pray this prayer with me right now if you've never received Jesus as your Savior. Jesus, right now, I believe in you. Jesus, you died for me. Jesus, you paid the price for my sin. Jesus, you resurrected. Jesus, you are my Lord. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time in your life, God just became your father. And you became a son or a daughter. Write us and let us know about it. You can do that on the website. Listen again as we bring you another message of faith, hope, and love. This is Mark Irvin.